So here it is, we finally got it in the studio, the Lenovo Legion Y740. A lot of you guys are leaving comments on my other laptop videos requesting to review this, and I don't blame you. The Y730 was a solid laptop. In fact, you would be hard pressed to tell the difference between both laptops if you saw them beside each other. They look exactly the same. In fact, the only way to tell the difference is to look at the actual label or open it up and look for the actual RTX sticker. The build quality is the same. You still have a metal design with a very solid hinge that goes up to 180 degrees. You have all of your ports, which are housed at the back of the laptop, which gives your desk setup a nice clean and tidy experience. It still weighs the same at 6.2 pounds, so it's not the lightest laptop, but it's still respectable compared to other 15 inch laptops. But you do have a good port setup. On the left hand side, for example, you have your USB type C Thunderbolt 3 port and your audio jack. On the back, you have your mini display port, full size HDMI, USB 3.1, RJ45, another USB 3.1, and of course your power connector. One thing to note about that power connector, it's big. 230 watts is like the standard size for an RTX 2070. It's just the physical form of it. When you compare this to other laptops, this one is much wider and much longer. They totally could have condensed the size, making this a little bit easier to travel with. Now the internals on this are pretty good. You can upgrade a bunch of stuff. Like for example, the very fast NVMe drive is swappable if you want something bigger down the road. There's an actual big 2.5 inch drive bay. I got a one terabyte drive in here. You can swap it out for a regular SSD if you want to speed things up. I don't like the fact that they put a 2.5 inch drive. That means they reduced the size of the battery. This one is only 52 watt hours, which means you're not getting the best battery life. I was only getting about three to three and a half hours of use before needing to charge. Now the good news though, is is that there's a hybrid mode with this laptop. And when you flick it on, it basically disables G-Sync, enables Optimus, and gives you better battery life. So we know that the display supports G-Sync, but it's also 144 Hertz and it's full HD. The color accuracy is very similar to last year's model. So you're gonna get pretty good results if you're doing content creation on, and the screen itself is perfect for gaming. The only area that I wish was a little bit better was the brightness. I would have loved to see it hit 300 nits instead of 285. Now, the one thing that I still don't like about this laptop is the actual webcam. It's placed on the bottom so it's going to stare directly up your nose. Sound is still coming out of two speakers on the bottom. They actually sound good for bottom firing speakers. There's a little bit of tinniness, but not too much. But overall, they get quite loud. Now, unfortunately, I'm not the biggest fan of the keyboard. I like the shape of the keys. I just don't like the way they feel. They're way too mushy. These are not gaming keys. I would have loved to have more actuation when I'm pressing down. Also, there's just a lot of flex on this keyboard, making it very squishy. I do like the RGB lighting though. The partnership with Corsair loading up IQ really allows me to customize the experience. I can basically individualize each key or set up things in zones. I can even play with the fan lighting or even the O in Legion on front of the cover. Touchpad, same situation. They could have made it better. This is a very small touchpad. I don't like the fact that there's physical buttons. I would have preferred an actual touchpad instead. So let's talk about what really matters and that happens to be the performance. You're not gonna get a CPU bump this year and that goes for any gaming laptop. So you're gonna be using the same i7-8750H. The big jump though is the GPU itself. You're now using RTX graphics. This model has the RTX 2070 Max-Q, but you can buy it with the 2080 Max-Q or drop down to the 2060. The difference though is that this laptop really excels in cooling while other laptops excel in other areas like performance. For example, with synthetic benchmarks, this laptop didn't do nearly as good of a job compared to the Razer Blade 15. It pretty much got beaten out in most performance benchmarks. But when I was actually putting this under full load and really pushing the processor in Ida 64, this one did a much better job of keeping turbo boosts at 3.0 to 3.1 gigahertz. Other laptops would range anywhere from 2.4 to 2.8 to keep the CPU cool. Gaming was the same experience. I might have got five FPS less than the Razer Blade 15, which also brings me to fan noise. When it's under full load, it doesn't get nearly as loud as other products. You can hear the sound from the laptop without any interference from the fans. So here's the bottom line. The Legion Y740 doesn't change the design because it's working so well. Sure, it doesn't meet the performance compared to other competing laptops, but the difference is, is very minor. At the end of the day, I'd rather have better cooling than slightly faster performance. There are some things they could change though. The keyboard could be better and the mouse pad could be bigger, but overall this is still a very solid laptop. I hope you guys enjoyed the video because if you did, I want you to hit the like button. If you're new to the channel, subscribe.
subscribe. And as always, I will see you in the next video.